The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles stand confidently at the heart of 1980s pop culture, raising an entire generation on their ninja escapades across movies, television, comic books, and games. They have almost always been portrayed as colorful heroes, but their origin tells a different story. As a group of cold-blooded killers raised and trained for one single purpose, to find and murder the Shredder, let's check it out in the Court of Source. The story of the Ninja Turtles began on a fateful night in November of 1983. Comic creators Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird were working on a project when inspiration had struck. Eastman drew a masked, nunchuck-wielding turtle and showed it to his colleague. The two laughed over the ridiculous concept. What started as a joke ended up becoming a bit more serious, with the two eventually deciding that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles should be their next project. The turtles would draw inspiration from numerous dark and gritty sources of the early 1980s, but mainly the works of Frank Miller, particularly Ronin and Daredevil. Ronin tells the story of the spirit of a feudal Japanese samurai awakening in a dark dystopian New York City. Here he fights mutants, cannibals, artificial intelligence, above and beneath the grounds in the sewers, striking a clear similarity to our turtle friends. Miller's run on Daredevil would be even more influential, directly inspiring numerous aspects of the Ninja Turtles. The turtles would be mutated by a toxic ooze accident on the streets of New York, which was nearly the exact same way Daredevil got his powers. Splinter, the turtle's master, also had his name inspired by Daredevil's master, Stick, and the enemies of the turtles Turtles, known as the Foot Clan, would be named after the assassin ninja enemies of Daredevil, the Hand. The pages of both of these Miller works were riddled with bloody violence and grotesque hopelessness. These dark stories would lay the foundation for the birth of the Ninja Turtles, a group of vicious assassins raised and trained for one single purpose, to exact revenge and murder the Shredder. These were not your friendly crime-fighting turtles. Down to the very core of the artwork, the original turtles were ruthless assassins. After Splinter would reveal the reason he trained the turtles, they would embark on their quest to kill Shredder, with absolutely no intent of showing mercy. The climactic battle between the turtles and Shredder would take place on a Manhattan rooftop. The battle would be bloody, with the Foot Clan being entirely decimated, and the turtles ultimately defeating Shredder. They would offer him the chance to commit seppuku, the honorable samurai method of suicide, which he would decline, and then be thrown from the building in his attempt to take the turtles with him. Once going mainstream, the turtles would become a much more friendly group of characters, sporting distinct personalities ideally marketable for the masses. However, some of the early adaptations of the turtles would stay somewhat true to their dark origins. This is particularly clear in the 1990s live action version of the turtles. The film depicts a dark and graffitied New York, riddled with violence, youth crime, and street gangs. The fighting is vicious, characters are bloodied, and one of the turtles even falls into a coma. Much like the comic book, the climactic battle between the Turtles and Shredder also takes place on a New York City rooftop. With a few caveats, there is no offer of seppuku to be had, and Splinter shows up to defeat the Shredder in a defensive manner, which results in his fall from the building. He lands in a garbage truck, where Casey Jones then flips the switch on. Oops! which may actually be a throwback to the darker intentions for the scene. Recent adaptations of the Turtles have truly gone the route of bubblegum blockbusters, but it's nice to be reminded of who they were originally supposed to be. Perhaps at some point we will see another adaptation of the Turtles that pays proper homage to their darker origin. Excellent! Thanks again for tuning in with The Court of Source. If you haven't checked out our video on how Archer was inspired by the Cold War, you can check it out over here. Otherwise, next week we're planning a little bit of a different direction with a new segment which is very exciting. Please like, subscribe, and continue to suggest new topics because we will get to everything eventually. Take care, and as always, we'll see you in court.